I'm Mark Bremer, and in this 12th movie or tutorial by Renderosity on Poser 10 and Poser Pro 2014, we will be looking at non-photorealistic rendering. There are two ways to approach this, and I need to let you know that if you're looking for some photorealistic type of tips, then you need to see the movie immediately preceding this one, number 11, because those items and approaches are covered there. The non-photorealistic rendering in Poser has two categories. There's the cartoon category, and then there's the natural media category. They're both different. One actually looks like sketches and paintings and all sorts of that. The other one looks, some of it is old school cartoon, some of it is a very new feature which Poser put in as part of Poser 10 in 2014, and that is the modern comic book look, which is just fantastic. Now, the thing with the comic book look, we'll take a uh, look at that first, is that it uh, may not be super intuitive, both in how you look at it, how you um, make it do what you want, and how you render it. It doesn't function like the other items inside of Poser. So we can see I've got a scene here with our moist gray overlords uh, from a, in a space in there. If I go ahead and click the textured render, it'll think for a second I've got the stock twilight lighting setting in here so we get some nice kind of warmth uh, setting sun type of thing and our alien with a freshly landed spaceship and some buildings. Now the first place we look when we want to work with the cartoon settings is over here in the document display. And this is why it's different than the other rendering settings because you have to set this up inside of the preview area. There is the very old school cartoon and if I click on that we get um, well kind of a mishmash of gray. How do we change this? Where are additional controls for this cartoon display? Well they are under display. And I'm going to click and we'll see we've got a list and all the way down here at the bottom is cartoon tones and you can see it's going off the screen so that that doesn't happen again just know that you can get it from the display pull down. What I'll do instead is right click in my scene and I get the exact same menu but it's a little more compact. So I'm going to switch to three tones plus highlight. So now the display is different in here and this is a display for the cartoon settings. If I switch from this cartoon preview down here to cartoon with lines, then we get the exact same thing, but now we're seeing some detail up here in the top. Let me move my mouse off that. And we can see the top of the alien's head, that type of thing. This may or may not be a look you want. If we go with some of the other options that are in here under toon tones, we can say one tone and it turns to just a universal gray color. And if we happen to go all the way down to the bottom with smooth toned, we get this kind of clay look. This may be the look you're working with and that's fine if it is. However, what we should really look at and the cool feature happens to be the new one which is comic book. And if I come down here and select comic book, we see we get a little different presentation with what's going on right here. We're still getting some gray in here and that is by virtue of the display we have going on it is respecting the display we have which is cartoon with line down here. What we want to do to fully use this new comic book option is to come back over here to texture shaded. Now I click on that, it thinks about it for a second and you'll notice that even though it's texture shaded what's going on is we're getting a high contrast black and white presentation but there's far more detail in the scene. Now we've got another control that pops up here that you don't get any other place unless you engage the new comic book function and this happens to be a threshold control. It allows us to hide and reveal based on the lighting in the scene how much detail is present. So depending on your needs right here we can go ahead and change that up. If we want we can go ahead and zoom into our scene a little bit. Let me click off that and I'll show you what it really means in terms of like this alien's face. You can do animations this way, you can do stills. If I go ahead and change the control right now, we can see where that to dark comes in there. And if you want to do some manual coloring in Paint Shop Pro or Photoshop, this is a great option to get going with that. So how about if we want a color view of this? Well, then the thing to do is to go ahead and I'll right click again. Let me click off of that threshold control. He said, let's go ahead and right click. I was thinking about it for a second. And let me get up higher so you can see that. Toon Tones, we'll go to comic book color. Now for this to work, the 
texture shaded has to be engaged. So it's picking up the warm colors of the lights in the scene that were set up for this twilight feature and the threshold control. This is where you can really decide how much or how little darkness you want into the scene depending on what you need. So you might say, okay, great. I see how to control it. We've got these new controls that go on. Got it. How do I actually render this and capture it? The cartoon feature requires the preview render mode. If we simply come over, well, let's see, if we come up to render and render settings, we've got Firefly Sketch, which we'll get to in a little bit, and preview. Preview is just that, how you go ahead and um, deal with this preview interface. The comic book function is a preview function in Poser. So to render it, we need to be in the preview options. There's a little something down here called Enable Ambient Inclusion, which goes ahead if we engage that and render it. We'll see a little different presentation to how shadows occur on the scene. But with these things set right now, and here are some tune edge line width controls. There are some silhouette line controls. You can play with those. We won't spend time going over that because, well, you're a smart person. You can do that yourself. Let's go ahead and do render. And we see we get a very, very uh, darker presentation for a second, but it kicked in and finished the rendering. Nice presentation. So this is how you go ahead and work with the comic book settings and render it out. You'll notice that we have the option to switch between different renderers right here, Preview and Firefly. If I choose Firefly and we decide to render again, then we'll go to the last saved settings in Firefly, which should be the draft settings. So it's calculating all the shadow maps right here while it does that. We'll get a completely different look to that. But you can switch back and forth real quickly between the photorealistic type of presentation with Firefly and then working with the sketch or the preview modes right here calculating reflection and all that type of good stuff right there and it's picking up uh, the tarmac in his eyes right there so let's come back to the preview right here and another way to if we're in the preview mode here to get a really good idea of what's going on in your scene it's thinking about it for just a second and that is to come up to render and you can also choose anti-alias document this is the exact same thing really for the cartoon presentation as rendering the scene. You'll notice it kicked us back into the render tab invisibly and here we are again. You can go ahead and set up your render settings just like you would as we had looked at with the render options. If I come down to render settings and then we've got uh, our settings here for <clears throat> how we want that to work and finally if we go to, let me go ahead and cancel out of this when we go to render dimensions we can set up whether we want it to render to screen or to a separate file that could be significantly larger so that would just be depending on what your final render needs to be if you're working with movies and you want to work with this new comic book effect you can do that as well it just needs to be in preview mode and then you can go ahead and set up when you come to render settings here you can simply engage movie settings and do that as well and then render the animation out um, just a matter of fact, you may want to render that to image files if you're actually going to use a third-party assembly program like After Effects or some of the Apple products or others out there, Sony Vega, to put these things together. Image files are always better than using other animations, just a word to the wise. So, we've got this set now. We know that uh, to make it work correctly, we need to go ahead and make sure for the new comic book setting, that the texture shaded is engaged and then we choose it with a right click from the preview area right here where we can go ahead and choose tune tones comic book either black and white or color and this relates to the old style type of comic book options that we've got down here in the display area for with outline and without outline so that is the comic book let's jump into the non photorealistic natural media renders if we come to render, render settings again, we've got sketch. You can spend hours and hours playing with the feature sets in the sketch area. And it's just a lot of fun to do. There's some presets right here that get you going, some visual presentations. You can decide, well, I want loose color like this, or I want maybe some tighter color that looks more like I'm using a paintbrush. Total decisions for you if we choose a sketch item right here we see that the sketch preset just changed to loose sketch. If I go render now, it'll think about it. This is a fairly complex function and the more things you add, stroke, 
changes in colors, it changes the presentation. Now you can say, well, that's yeah, okay. Um, hmm. Are there ways to change what I'm seeing here? I like the, the pencil look, but is there something else? And the answer is yes. You can go ahead and come down to render settings. And this is where you can kill lots of free time, and it's fun. Sketch Designer. When you click on this, it opens up a preview window and gives you access to all the controls that you can use to modify this. You can also work with the background, which has its own setting, and you can deal with how edges are presented and modify each one of these settings accordingly. For objects right here, I was going to go ahead and lighten the density. We get an immediate feedback of what's going on, so it gives you a tremendous ability to go ahead and control that. If we go to edges and say, you know what, I want a lot more definition on edges, we can keep increasing that and see how it works. You can mix and match and come up with your own ones, but usually the easiest thing to do is to go ahead, let me cancel here, is to choose one of the presets. We can go to color right here. This happens to be silky. If we go with uh, smoothie right here and then uh, pop into the sketch designer, you'll see that what happens is it goes right back into the earlier sketch mode. Instead, to change that, I guess you could consider this a feature of Poser, if we go Render Now, it'll think about it and we'll go ahead and gauge these other options that we have set in there. And let's see what's going on. If it renders black and white again, there, no it didn't, came in with the, the, the look here. And boy, it looks like a mummy, doesn't it, from uh, National Geographic. Anyhow, we've got the look now. If we don't like it, when we come back to Render Settings and pop open the Sketch Designer, now we're getting an update. Poser's a little bit funny about this, and I want to mention a little bug or feature, depending on how you uh, consider this to, to happen inside the program. You'll see here that to get the sketch designer to update and work with the controls dynamically in here, I had to go ahead and render and then reopen the sketch designer. I will tell you that when we're working in the comic book setting area, and I'm going to cancel out of this, sometimes see these li lines that indicate where the lights are? Sometimes you can't get rid of those things when you're using the comic book render, and the only option is to close the file and open it again. Don't know why, wish you didn't have to do that, but I've encountered that uh, more than one time. And uh, just be aware that refreshing the file by closing and opening it is one of the best ways to deal with it and work with it. Now, for just simple settings inside the sketch designer, I'm going to go ahead and open this up again. We've got... Um, this kind of really monotone palette. And you know what? Let me uh, get out a preview here and turn off the comic book setting so we don't have these dark areas to work with. There's an update. Let's go ahead and render and see if that actually changes the way it presents inside Poser. I'll say render now. This is the same painting settings that we used last time. It's really important to experiment with between the display document. If you're working with a comic book and what goes on here, very similar, but it's a little bit lighter this time. It was picking up some of those dark shadow details from the comic book preview that we had set up. Whether it should or not, it doesn't really matter. Just be aware that it does. Let's come back in here to Render Settings and pick another option. The sketch ones we can work with, there's just so many um, fun things to work with here, and I'll go ahead and say Render now for the sketch version, that you can get such a unorthodox look that people won't even know is made by a computer or you can use it as an underpainting for something you would take into Photoshop or Paint Shop Pro. This is a tremendous time saver and it's got classical roots being able to use rendered features as an underpainting. There were many times that uh, masters would come by and sketch to give students a head start and then they would go ahead and paint on top of that. That's kind of what this does and it sets you up for that ability very very easily. Let's explain some of the options that we happen to have inside the Sketch Designer settings itself. I'll open this up. More clearly, we've got objects, background, and edges, and as you would expect, those go with it. When we work with the ability here to change individual strokes, we've got a bunch of very um, we've got options within options, really, is what I'm trying to say. We've got this sharp option, which is more like a single pencil that we can work with. If we choose to soften that up, it goes ahead and starts blurring these lines out. And if we go ahead and change it to 
let's say slanted we change the presentation for that all these things affect the way it looks and this is why you just spend time doing it like the painted style then what we do is simply engage colored strokes and it starts doing the same thing the difference between a pencil stroke and a paintbrush stroke happens to be the width which is controlled right here by maximum width and minimum width of the stroke itself the reason it hasn't refreshed completely is that we've got tons of little strokes right here and it probably would like uh, some larger ones there we go taking some time to put that together the smaller I make these the greater the detail but the longer the program takes to figure it out let me bring that down again there we go now you notice that I had to wait for a refresh on that the sketch designer for all its many wonderful features has little issues like that where you just have to play with it to reset something and it'll go ahead and go oh oh it'll wake you up and or you wake it up and it does its thing also for lighting you can go ahead and engage more of the lighting that you have set in your scene to have it affect what's rendered out so this is an interesting play just like working in the firefly renderer with how much light do i have how much uh, weight do i give to ambient occlusion those types of things you can do the same thing here to see which one better represents or reveals your product or as the photographer say renders the shape of your your image to work with you can drag around the scene get a good idea of what's going on and if we come to background we get the same exact settings but you can go ahead and have the background remain black and white strokes you can have it go to colored strokes this ability to control those things is just fantastic when I come to edges and say for edges of objects I want to get the width up more we can start to see it uh, do a bad job there and we'll bring this back down into something that maybe will be a little more successful let's see still too heavy now it looks like you've gone in there with a magic marker um, really nice way again to painlessly get some natural media looks that you can go ahead and further customize in other programs so there's your quick whirlwind tour of working with the non photorealistic renderers we've got our comic book render let me go ahead and cancel out of this that uh, is engaged from the preview window right clicking and or getting to the display options where you can access cartoon tones the old-fashioned tones which are the ones on the top let me click out of this and then the two new ones for Poser Pro 2014 comic book and comic book color which give you something much more of a stochastic type of shadowing much more graphic novel and then the sketch designer which is just too much fun to play with so with these ideas and the preceding 11 movies you've got a very good handle on what's going on with Poser and can start exploring some of the neat capabilities and uh, creating some wonderful images that this program will allow you to do